Welcome to the SRS Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron J. Babiar, and I'm the Training Director of Support Raising Solutions. Whether you're a new ministry worker or a veteran looking to increase your competence and confidence, Support Raising Solutions seeks to bless you in your quest to be a spiritually healthy, vision-driven, fully funded Great Commission. Welcome to a pretty unique podcast like many of you in the world if you're listening to this in in real time within a day or two of it being released we have certainly been affected uh, by the COVID-19 virus and uh, it's 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 doing uh, a lot of weird things in a lot of weird uh, weird ways obviously it's a it's affecting a lot of people personally with uh, really tragic health consequences and so we're we're very aware of that and prayerful uh, regarding that. Um, also, though, this affects people who raise and live off support. And so we don't want to be insensitive in any way. Um, wow. When something like this happens, it's just it's not about the money. Um, that being said, though, we know that there are people who are in process of going through financial hardship uh, already because of the, the changes that uh, the virus has brought about. We know there are people who are actively raising their support right now, and they're confused as to how to move forward, or if they move forward, or or what to do. And and so, uh, first and foremost, we just want to say that we know God is on the throne. He's not surprised by any of this. Uh, yet also, th- there are some real practical things to talk about and consider. And and also, uh, my, my guest today and, and myself are going to be sharing a little bit about where we're at in the world and about some things going on with us because we, we are both uh, currently uh, being very actively affected uh, by the virus as well. So uh, first of all, um, w- 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 with that very clear mandate, uh, this is mostly about God's glory and there is a virus, uh, but, but it does affect our finances and how do we approach this as kingdom workers. Um, we want to respectfully move forward uh, when that co- with that conversation, but but please know that uh, we're, we're very sensitive that this is a, a, a global pandemic situation, and um, yeah, we're we're just not all about the money, uh, but it is a topic that that we need to dig into. So, with that being said, uh, my guest today and and I are face to face. We're 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 practicing social distancing, so we're about six feet apart. Uh, we're both trying to tr- uh, project our voice. Um, also, we're both in Asia. So, uh, m- my guest, uh, first of all, uh, I know I don't want to use your your real name. You're, you're you're in and out of closed country. So, uh, but we're also friends. So, what do you want me to call you, buddy? Well, Aaron, you make up a name for me. How about uh, how about Scott? Scott? I'll be Scott today. All right. Yeah. Hi, Scott. Yeah. You, know, you look like a Scott. Yeah. Thanks. I feel like a Scott. <laughs> okay, Scott. <laughs> All right, so Scott, um, we're going to later in, in this podcast get into some some practical applications as far as what people uh, might be doing regarding their support, uh, specifically maybe even so, some ideas for uh, some things they could be working on and, and, and doing and, and praying about and communication wise. But before we get into some of that, let's you and I first just share a little bit about how uh, the uh, the virus has already affected both of us because uh, quite honestly it, it's very much affecting me let's get to my story in a second let's start with you because it's been affecting you longer than what it has been me because even though I'm with Asia with you right now um, you 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 live in Asia so tell us a little bit about your your family's story over the last we'll just say over the last few weeks it might be longer than that it might be shorter obviously we don't want to share what country uh, you come and go from frequently Scott I know there's there's a lot of them but Tell us a little about your, your recent history with the, with the virus and your family that lives off support while doing kingdom work. Yeah, yeah, glad to uh, glad to share about that, Aaron. It has been, as you alluded to, it's been a real, uh, it's been unprecedented times. It's been a it's been a a, a tough road over the last uh, two months. So just a little bit of uh, of context for what our family's been through. We traveled away from our Asian country that we live in. Uh, Two months ago, just about exactly two months ago, uh, for a little bit of a vacation, and then we were uh, meeting up in another Asian country for some uh, for a conference and some uh, time with our ministry team. And while we were on the road traveling from one place to the next, you know, we would chase, uh, uh, kind of be uh, checking the news, 
uh, every day and uh, also having conversations with our uh, crisis management director and okay. uh, and the news was just getting worse and worse every day right every day and when I left uh, our, our home two months ago I of course I knew about the virus our we had been alerted to that or read the news but it just didn't seem like a big deal mm. you know if I had known it would be a, a big deal we would have packed a whole lot differently sure two yeah. months ago you may not have even left you might have Who, who's to say at this point it you left. <laughs> you yeah. were you were doing ministry work. Right. You were at a conference. Your whole family went. Things were trucking along, and then at one point you realized, "Oh, wait a minute. We probably uh, not probably we're not going to go back to what is our current home in Asia at, at least for a while, right?" That's right. Yeah, and you you hit it right on the head. Uh, if we had known how things would progress, we we would not have left. Mm -hmm. Of course, initially it seemed like uh, our home country in Asia was was being devastated, mm. uh, but now it seems like uh, things have kind of turned a corner there. Mm. Uh, but the countries that we've been in and the country that we're in now, you and I together, mm -hmm. you're experiencing it too. Mm -hmm. uh, so welcome to our world. Thanks for inviting me into your. Yeah, family. I'm glad you could experience the pain. <laughs> Welcome to this wonderful, beautiful place. Yes. But uh, but now it seems like uh, we might be stuck here and unable to, to get to other places that we might want to go. Right, right. Now, uh, just for people that are wondering, too, I still live in Arkansas. Uh, my wife and I, uh, even with her health problems, we, we very much felt led that we were supposed to go uh, on this trip together. It's not holiday. It's not vacation. We did plan for some downtime, though. Uh, but also, I was leading an SRS boot camp, and uh, we we knew about the virus and that it was spreading, and we strongly considered not even coming. Uh, but also, you know, Scott, at no point did it feel like we weren't supposed to come. I think we were very open to that. We're like, oh, well, this might make sense. We're not supposed to go. And instead, uh, Marky and I looked at each other, and we just said, wow, um, it still feels like we're supposed to do what we what our plane ticket says. <laughs> like we're supposed to go. And so uh, we, we traveled to uh, the Asian country that you and I are both in right now, Scott. And uh, the first several days here, it was quote unquote, business as normal. Uh, we're staying in a, in a Western hotel. And uh, there's a, a lot of, or there were a lot of people staying in the hotel as well. And, uh, you know, open breakfast and uh, there's a swimming pool that, uh, uh, I, I would get to, I didn't get to go every day, but when I got a chance, I'd go jump in the pool. And um, so it kind of sounds like holiday, but trust me, I was working as well. And, and as we were leading the, the boot camp, um, well, at, at the end of the first day of the boot camp, uh, all of a sudden, news changed big time. There was some government mandates, and uh, the day two of the boot camp uh, was supposed to be uh, 20 people there. Um, and uh, from go, we were missing a few people. By lunch, we were missing a few more people. Uh, by middle of the afternoon, we were missing a few more people uh, because people were just having to get out of the country. Uh, many people traveled here from other places wanting to get the boot camp training. And we had planned to slow it down a little bit differently from what we do the boot camps in America. We had planned to do it over three days. What we ended up doing is um, we ended up vastly accelerating. And uh, I, I taught through about 80% of the boot camp in six hours. Uh, my brain hurt afterwards. <laughs> um, but the reality is people had to leave. People had to go. And, uh, and so on one hand, I was really thankful that we got a chance to pour into a lot of uh, wonderful ministry-minded kingdom workers that were coming from or going to other places around Asia uh, and gave them something that they wouldn't have had otherwise. Uh, but meanwhile, all of a sudden, the, the final day of boot camp was no longer, and my wife and I still weren't supposed to travel out for a couple of days, and so I, I watched the hotel we're in just kind of empty out. In fact, I, I think, Scott, I think you were the first one that said, it's like a ghost town around here, yeah. <laughs> and it is, and it is. There's hardly anybody here, and, and it was packed just a few days ago. So at the time we're recording this, uh, I and my wife are planning to uh, get on an airplane tonight and God willing get back to Arkansas in the next couple of days. We've been practicing social distancing. Uh, we traveled with Clorox wipes. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Scott and I are at least six feet apart right now. So we're, we're trying to take all the proper precautions, but we kind of are where we are. And so on one hand, I get to go back to the quote unquote safety of America. But meanwhile, our, our, our kids are 
our kids are already quarantined uh, back in the U.S. And like most people listening, school has gone online and groceries are a bit of an issue, but so, so far everything's going okay. And, and anyway, that, that's enough about my story. But the, the point is, uh, for the sake of time that we're recording this, we're both very much uh, in, in flux, in flux. So, Scott, share with everybody a little bit what's going on in your head and heart right now. And we are going to get into the finances here in a few minutes. But in your head and heart, uh, your family is with you here in a different Asian country from the one in which you live. And I've heard you talk this week, and the few times we've been able to speak, your intent is to get back to your quote-unquote home country in Asia, even though you're American. Um, are you guys going home in a couple few days? Are you staying here? <laughs> I, can, I can see by your face you don't have quick answers to this, but, but what are your thoughts? And, and by the way, uh, Scott and his wife uh, have children. They have teenagers. Uh, I won't say how many, but they have some. And, uh, of course, they're experiencing a, a sense of loss. And in, in fact, Scott has a, a daughter, not unlike uh, many in the U.S., who's supposed to be walking, having some sort of graduation here within the next month or two, and everything is, is on the back burner right now. So, anyway, so Scott, what's going on with you guys right now? I mean, for this moment, insofar as you can tell, tell us a little bit about that. And don't just tell us about the, the math. Tell us a little about the emotional side of things. Yeah, thanks, Aaron. I'd be glad to share about that. Uh, yeah, you hit it right. Uh, kind of hit the nail on the head right there. Uh, we're just, you know, kind of experiencing all, you know, all sorts of emotions. Um, you know, I kind of liken it to, uh, you know, the illustration you probably heard. You know, you're on the ocean, and uh, you're, you're, you know, the waves are kind of intense. You know, and, and you're you're kind of hanging in there, you know, uh, a wave will come, but you can, you can withstand it and then get some air, you know, kind of get your bearings again, but then another wave comes and it, and it kind of, you know, knocks you back. Mm. And then the waves start to pick up in, in frequency and they're coming, you know, boom, 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 boom. And I feel like, um, I feel like that's, that's kind of a good word picture for our experience. Okay. You know, it, it's, it's, especially over the last 48 hours. Um, actually, really, for the last six weeks, yeah. um, you know, for sure, this has been the, the hardest time in ministry in my life. Uh, we've mm. been in ministry for over 20 years, mm. and this has been by far the the highest stress period. And we've lived through a lot of high stress. Mm -hmm. uh, we live in a country where uh, uh, they don't take too kindly to what we do mm -hmm. there, and so by God's grace, we have managed to uh, persevere and to uh, to not experience any trouble there. And so, uh, but now we're experiencing trouble on a different front. Mm -hmm. uh, and so every time it seems like now, uh, like I said, for the last two months, really, uh, but especially over the last 48, 72 hours, every time I pick up my phone, uh, every time I read the news, it's just more bad news. Yeah. In fact, uh, this morning when we first met, uh, you, you said something like, I just got to not look at my phone. Every, every text message is coming at me and it's another... It's something else that I seem to not process for a couple of hours. So, uh, Scott, I love you and I respect you, and, and I even respect the tears in your eyes because I know this has been. Uh, that doesn't translate very well. Nobody can see the tears in your eyes but me. Um, I'll make fun of you because we're friends, but no, <laughs> no. Hey, you better wait. You're laughing. You need to laugh out loud because everyone else is mad at me right now. For... <laughs> okay. <thank Well>, <laughs> no, no. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm not actually mocking you for that. This is very real. This is very real, and this is a very, very hard time, and so I'm, I'm sensitive to that. And by the way, uh, to the listener, I wanted you to hear a little bit of our stories and where we're at right now, partially because we know this is not just about the money. There's so many other things going on here, and yet there is a conversation about the resources that God has released for not only Scott's kingdom work, but my kingdom work, and, and those who we are also equipping to survive and thrive in ministry and you're probably listening to this because you're looking for you're looking for some some information like that. So we'll get to it, I promise. But we wanted to put a little humanity on the front side of this. Yeah, and Aaron, let me just also interject that um, you know I know your listeners don't know me, but uh, but my personality, you know, is kind of a you know just kind of nose to the grind, mm -hmm. get her done. Yep. You know, uh, just uh, kind of. Check You're from Texas. Check originally. things off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> God's country, right? Yeah. <laughs> the Lone Star State, and that's just kind of how I've been, yeah. you know, uh, for a long time. And 
And I think my, my posture over these last two months has been more or less the same. You know, when you're dealing with a crisis, mm -hmm. you've got a family to take care of. Mm -hmm. In my case, uh, I've also got a, um, a ministry team mm -hmm. uh, and a ministry region mm -hmm. that includes uh, people of, of different cultures, yes. different languages. Uh, and they're all struggling with this stuff just as much as, that's as right. you are, and they're looking to you for guidance. Exactly. And, and they're living, it's also a virtual team. We're, we're a distributed team as well. Many of us are in one place together. Many of us are here right now, but not all of us. We have people uh, spread out to the four corners of the globe right now, and they're all in different situations. And so I'm, I'm bearing that responsibility mm -hmm. uh, and also helping to guide and work with our, the leadership of, of my organization as well right. to speak into some of that right. as well. And so it's, it's really just been kind of all consuming, yeah. uh, but I think only recently have I kind of allowed the, um, you know, I've just been numb to the emotions and just allowing the, the emotions to kind of just to feel what's going on. And, yeah. you know, you hit it on the head with my, with my, my child who's, uh, who's graduating high school this year and unable to, you know, probably unable to get that diploma, yeah. you know, and all that is involved. Or at least there. experience it with the friends and the, yeah, exactly. the final you know, day at school and all that stuff. Yeah, just, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, she'll get a diploma. She'll get graduated if we can get her past uh, her math class right now. <laughs> but, you know, we may, we may just figure out what it means to graduate over Zoom, yeah. you know, and that's not what any of us were expecting this year, but, yeah. but uh, God's still in control. Yeah, yeah. Well, and with that being said, um, and I don't want you to share the U.S. dollars exactly because some people might think, well, that sh that could be worse, or that could that could be that shouldn't be so much. And, and so people come at things from different from different perspectives. But uh, one of the ideas that we teach in, in the SRS boot camps, which we still highly recommend, e even though SRS is probably not going to be actually doing public boot camps here, at least for the short term, because of social distancing. Uh, we, we really do believe that uh, it's the best training in the world if you've never been through a boot camp. We hope you go through one. And if you're fully funded and you don't need it, that's great for everybody else. Uh, man, it, it's fantastic. We hope you get to one at some point. With that being said, though, uh, it, it's changing everything when it comes to, to finances. And one of the things that we teach in those boot camps is that people need a reserve. They need to have some funds set aside for the unforeseen. And Scott, I know that uh, you practice this. Um, tell us a little bit what what's happened with you. Maybe not all the specific dollar amounts, but what are some of the broad financial emergency things that have kicked in that have affected your finances over the last four to six weeks? Yeah, well, let me just back up for one minute if I can sure. and just kind of say, like I said, I've been in ministry for over 20 years and, and uh, my perspective on, on support and ministry partner development has has really, uh, by God's grace, has really evolved uh, over the past uh, 10 to 12 years, I think especially. And uh, uh, for example, you know, in contrast, when I was uh, younger in ministry, my, my philosophy was, you know, hey, what's what's the bare minimum? You know, what's the minimum amount of monthly support? And what's the minimum uh, reserve balance that I could go for to check that box and be fully funded, you know, and report to my assignment. Right. And, uh, and I did that, you know, and that worked, you know, back in the past. Actually, that probably worked until about two months ago. <laughs> in some ways, right? Yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, the, the whirlwind that we've found ourselves in over the last two months is uh, just with the chaos that's ensued that developed in Asia... Uh, we have had one unnecessary, you know, one unplanned and, 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 and unexpected expense after another. Uh, we, we've got airplane tickets that can't be used, that can't be refunded, you know, uh, for, for a large family. So it's not just one person. Uh, we've got um, car rental expenses. We've got lots of food. We've got temporary lodging expenses, uh, visa expenses, uh, shipping and additional luggage and you know, I, I'm sure, you know, medicines that, that were left back in our home country that we now need emergency supplies of. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I don't know what the numbers are, you know, that's interesting. I have to go add that up later, but, but maybe, you know, if I had to guess, it's probably three, maybe three or more, maybe, maybe three months of, of what our support goal would be. Right. Yeah. Right. What our normal monthly support goal would be times three is kind of what we've burned through over the last 60 days. Yeah. So over 60 days, in addition to the normal funds you would have spent in those 60 days, you spent an additional, 
90 days worth of funds. So you spend about 150 days worth of funds on a 60 day fund budget, so to speak. And so right. you most definitely tapped into your reserve. And I know you had a healthy reserve, but wow, is your reserve that healthy? Well, by God's grace, uh, it was there. Uh, I praise don't know the if Lord. it's there today. Honestly, <laughs> I've been so consumed. I haven't checked my uh, my MPDX. That's what I use. I okay. haven't checked that in about about a month. Thank you, crew, for putting out MPDX. A, a lot of ministry workers use that. That's a great it's a great tool. Um, and I know you'll you'll get back around to to digging into that once you get past a little bit of the the crisis scenario a little bit. Um, tell tell me briefly at this moment. I know things can change. Are you thinking that you might be going back to your home country uh, here in Asia where things have calmed? At this moment, this can always change. Do you think you're probably headed back there in the next week or two? We hope to. Uh, we really hope to. Uh, but even as we're having this, uh, doing this podcast, I, I'm getting real-time uh, texts from my wife, and she's giving me updated intelligence that she's getting from some of our partners and some of our friends who also serve in that country. Mm -hmm. uh, information's changing literally by the minute. And uh, we, two days ago, it looked pretty clean and clear for us to go back. Uh -huh. uh, now, with how the virus has, has uh, been on the rise here in this country, mm -hmm. it looks like if we were to go back, we might face some, uh, some pretty big obstacles yeah. uh, there. So yeah. we're just not sure. And by the way, by big obstacles, I know you mean beyond quarantine. But we'll, we'll, we'll stop there and get into that too far. I will say in the country that you and I are both in right now, the government is... Uh, has locked down, is tightening, tightening increasingly, and in fact, uh, the the where I am staying is only about a five to ten minute drive from where you're staying, and you had to go through a police checkpoint just to get over to me, uh, because that that's how much things are locked down right now. So uh, we won't belabor that point in, any further. Um, but I will say this, Scott, uh, love you, appreciate you, also just affirm the fact that. Yeah, this has an emotional, spiritual, and mental toll. It's not just a financial toll. And, and uh, I, I very much respect that you are leaning in with your, with your wife and kids. Uh, you're not just dictating. You're loving on them and processing through things with them, uh, as well as those that um, you help oversee. I, I know that you, you're, 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 you're very active. And on one hand, um, I know that you're constantly feeling like you're in a reactionary state right now. Uh, but, but I encourage you, like I encourage a lot of listeners, um, there's probably going to need to be some post-traumatic discussion whenever we get past the crisis. And I don't know how long the crisis is going to be, but these sorts of events, they're hard on us. They're just hard on us. And even speaking from a completely different situation as a man whose wife has suffered and we've almost lost Marky due to medical complications in the past, um, there's some breathing and, and mental recovery on, on the other side of crisis and trauma that um, you bet it's spiritual, but it's also emotional. Uh, it's, it's also, um, yeah, it's, it's difficult. So for those listeners that you're with an organization that provides some sort of member care, uh, I, I certainly encourage you to, to seek that out or, or even find some member care elsewhere somehow. <laughs> find some third-party member care because uh, most of us, if not all of us, are, are, are going to thrive, even as missionaries or whatever your, your, your term is, we're, we're going to thrive a whole lot better if we don't just repress, repress, repress. This is hard stuff, right? Yeah, Aaron, no, you're exactly right, and I think that's just a good reminder, you know, and I, I, I do want to just kind of give a shout out, if I can, to a couple of folks, uh, our own uh, member care director, you mm -hmm. know, uh, traveled all the way over here across the globe just a few days ago uh, to, uh, to minister to our team uh, because of what you just said. So mm. that's so needed. Uh, for myself, you know, I was really looking forward to uh, next week, uh, there's gonna be a men's conference, a men's member care conference uh, in this part of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, give a shout out to, uh, to, some, uh, to some friends at uh, Field Life who were sponsoring that conference, but it also had to be canceled. And I know that there's many other great organizations, I think like Exago and many others, that are doing that. Uh, so yeah, so that's that's a great word, you know, and so I guess uh, just selfishly I'm just hoping that that this ends as quickly as possible so that we can get past the crisis mode and, and focus on some of that 
PTSD that you just talked about. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, this is, this is going to affect people outside of the ministry ranks. But but that we know that the, the primary target audience for this podcast are people who raise and live off support. So um, let's go ahead and segue now. Let's get into uh, a little bit of the now what situation. So first of all, let's talk about this from the, the perspective of those who are supporting you in ministry, um, the people that pray for you, that send finances. Um, what should our response be to them? What, what do we tell them? Now, disclaimer, I don't know that there's a clear and easy answer in all this. And so anything that, that Scott and I say here, uh, we're just kind of thinking of it or we've read it in articles. Uh, I know that Jen Fortner uh, has a blog. I think it's Jen Fortner blogspot.com. I apologize if I said that wrong, uh, but she has a good article on this topic. Uh, Dave Dickens with Crew put out a good article recently. I don't, I'm not sure if that was just internal to Crew or if that went more broadly. So I have seen a couple of good emails with people talking about this topic. I know that SRS is putting one out as I speak. In fact, I'm hoping that by the time we publish this and within the next few days, I'll actually have a, a link to it in the show notes. So. Uh, if you're listening to this, maybe check the show notes. There might actually be a little link to, to more information as far as the how we respond to this. But for the sake of this conversation, Scott, what are a few things that we can do as people that, that uh, live off support? What can we do as far as communication with our supporters in this crazy time that we live in in, in this moment? A couple ideas. Yeah, well, I'm uh, I'm speaking from the perspective of someone who's been in in crisis mode for the last two months. So I'm mm-hmm. just going to be honest with you yeah. that uh, I haven't had the opportunity, uh, as much as I'd like, to reach out to my supporters and uh, minister to them and, and ask them how uh, how I can pray for them. I think that's you know that's probably at the at the top of the list. I'm just confessing that I haven't had a chance to do it right. uh, because of what we've been through over the last two months. Now a right. few people I've sent some some text messages to some to some donors and they've all responded positively. One of my uh, key supporters even offered to tell me jokes over uh, over text. He said I, <laughs> he said Scott, I think you need to laugh right now. So you want me to tell you some jokes? So yeah. So I where's think, Aaron Bergen yeah. when we need her? <laughs> Aaron Bergen is like this endless thing of of, of dad jokes. But anyway, right, you know, yeah. right. We've had a number of uh, our supporters and uh, several of our supporting churches, uh, actually I think all of our supporting churches, uh, we have about three or four of them, that have uh, reached out to us, many of them multiple times, and asked us how we're doing and how they can pray. So I think in our unique situation, I think that's an example of we just needed to be ministered to. Mm-hmm. But uh, once we come up for air, mm-hmm. you know, I really want to begin to minister to our supporters that are back stateside because they're now experiencing right. what we've been experiencing for two months. Right. In a similar note, um, I actually, I'm very much a, an Enneagram three to do list kind of guy. And so I have, I have a list right now. It's on my, it's on my computer of all my supporters. Uh, I, I'm using Karani, uh, like MPDX. Um, and, and I had already pre-planned and I, I just delayed it a couple of days because of everything going on here. And, how how busy even even I've been not not uh, not even living and working here full time but um, I, I certainly don't feel like I've been sitting back relaxing. <laughs> uh, point is, uh, I, I intend to in some way, shape, or form message all of my supporters uh, very soon, and it's probably going to be something as simple as, "Hey, I'm praying for you." Um, Marky and I are currently safe. We're also trying to get back. From Asia, we appreciate your prayers uh, for us, and that you know we we don't catch the virus, and, and that we have in, uninterrupted travel. And uh, as we probably are facing quarantine as soon as we get back. In fact, I think we'll probably quarantine ourselves anyway, um, just to be on the safe side. Anyway, I'm probably going to communicate, and I don't know if that's going to be two or three texts that I copy and paste, or if I'm going to do that on on social media and then you know tag people one by one, or. I haven't. I haven't. I think I've thought a little bit more, Scott, about the message I'm going to say, and not so much my delivery mechanism. Uh, but but the point is this: I am already praying for my supporters. I'm praying for their response. Uh, but also, uh, I feel an obligation, and not not in a mean bad way. But I feel an obligation to to pray for them right now, because as hard as this is on on you and and even myself, with you know having my kids be be quarantined, and I'm 
quite literally on the opposite side of the world right now. Um, yeah, I'm thinking, wow, I, I deal pretty well with trauma. Not everybody else does that well with it. There are probably some of my supporters that are really, really, really freaking out right now. And I want to express love. I want to express express um, that I really am praying for them. And, um, and not because they're not just a cash cow, but I want them to realize we are partners in ministry. And, and we are partners in this world. And God has allowed us to both be alive in this time, in this place, or whatever place we're in. And uh, we're still partners even as things are difficult. And the work goes on in, in our partnership in the Great Commission work, even though everybody's schedule is changing right now. And, and I'm sure I won't be doing a public boot camp anytime in the next month or, you know, or two or whatever else that is. And that doesn't mean, uh, that doesn't mean everything has stopped. So anyway, I, I, I haven't formulated all the words. I don't know exactly how I'm gonna text that exactly, but yeah, I do feel uh, it's a healthy thing right now for each of us as people who live off support to not just send out a newsletter, but to individually reach out in some way, shape, or form to our partners and say, I love you, I'm praying for you, Jesus is still on the throne, and, uh, uh, and be lifting us up. That, th those are some of my thoughts, at least. Um, other ideas? Yeah, Aaron, uh, yeah, a couple of thoughts that I, would, that I would have for what you just said. I, th I really appreciate all that you said. It really resonates with me, and, and I'm planning as soon as I get back to where we're staying to, uh, to send out a, a newsletter. Uh, again, we've got a lot of supporters that have asked how we're doing, mm -hmm. and I uh, feel, feel a little bit bad that for some of them, just because of my capacity over the last few days with all that I've shared, I haven't even been able to respond to their email. Right. So they're probably thinking, oh, Scott's got the virus and he's right. in the hospital. And so I want right. to, I want to, you know, relieve them of that and calm them down. And, and quick pause. I'm not beating you up and I'm not beating up anybody else that hasn't got to that point yet. Sure. No, You'll get there. Just make sure you get there. Don't be like one of those, oh, it's just not important. No, it actually is important, but you also have to have the capacity to do it. Right. Right. So that's, uh, yeah, that's definitely something that I want to, I want to prioritize. And I think, uh, I think that really wise to be able to, to minister to our supporters during this time through prayer and through encouragement, uh, using the scriptures, mm -hmm. uh, possibly uh, getting on a Zoom call. You know, yeah. many of our supporters back stateside, uh, especially some that are maybe older, may not be familiar with that technology, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, perhaps we could walk them through that. And send or they them have FaceTime on their phone yeah, that their yeah. kids bought for them That's right. or whatever else. Yeah. Send them your WhatsApp or whatever it might be, but send them a link and and uh, just get a Zoom call going, yeah. you know, things like that. One thing I wanted to mention uh, as I'm thinking about this is that uh, in, in, the, in the Asian country that is my home that mm -hmm. I can't get back to, we have learned a lot from the house church movement there. Uh, even though we haven't been there over the last two months, we have been in regular contact with our partners that are on the ground there. Okay. Mostly locals, but also some foreigners, and, and we're getting reports back, and I think they've already They've already gotten out around the world, but how the house church movement is thriving there. Mm. Uh, they were already used to meeting in small groups, uh, illegally, of course. Right. And and now they're just doing that on Zoom. Okay. And so uh, so we can take a lesson, I think, from the uh, from our faithful brothers and sisters in, in this part of Asia mm -hmm. and uh, get Zoom calls going for prayer. Uh, what would it look like if we got a, a, a five-person Zoom call going uh, among, you know, perhaps our, myself as the supported worker mm -hmm. and four or five of my friends back in the States who are supporters and let's just pray together for an hour yeah. or have a one-on-one -on -one yeah. call like that. Which some churches are even doing that right now. In fact, yeah. uh, I have friends that are with uh, a church called Experience Church in San Francisco. It's a church plant. And my understanding is they're doing every day at noon right now. They're saying, hey, let's we as a church, let's gather together on, on Zoom and pray together. Like every day this week and next week. Because I think that everyone's kind of on a 14-day thing right yeah. there. And so, yeah, you can do that sort of thing with with your supporters uh, to, to even just initiate and say, hey, um, I might be on this other side of the world, but I could use some... I could use some human contact. I bet you could too. What if we, what 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 if, what if we zoom at you know 12 p.m. Central Standard Time or, or you know more than likely it's going to be a morning a morning evening thing if you're we're, we're on the other side of the world. But the point is connection. Yeah, that's exactly right. For example, yesterday our executive director had had called for a, a day of prayer, a worldwide day of prayer, and so we have a number of of staff 
here in this place, and mm-hmm. so uh, we had been used to seeing each other. Mm-hmm. You had been used to seeing them at the boot camp as well, just a few days ago. Mm-hmm. You know, going to church together and eating meals, but now we're kind of isolated in each other's homes. So we just came together on Zoom for a prayer call. So you can get really creative with that, I think. Yeah. You know, with your supporters. One more resource I wanted to mention, Aaron. Uh, is this, you know, uh, we've been thinking a lot recently as we've been exiled here on the road about our Asian brothers and sisters. Uh, I was texting with a brother just a couple days ago who was in the central part of of the country and he reported that he and his family, they got two daughters, uh, he and his wife and two daughters, they've been cooped up at home for, I think they just surpassed 50 days. Okay. 50 days. By the way, there is some background noise here. We're just going to roll with it. We tried to get in a somewhat... Uh, re- re- reclusive place, and believe me, like when I say that the hotel where I'm at, where Scott is visiting me, um, it is like a ghost town, and yet every now and then someone comes by, and they're not even usually speaking in English anyway. But uh, if you hear backside, background noise, or birds, or whatever, we're just we're just rolling with it here. Uh, anyway, yeah, that's a good example. That's a good example. So, so we've been we've been taking a uh, uh, our cues from from our brothers and sisters back in country, and as they've been cooped up, certainly they've been praying a lot with their uh, fellow brothers and sisters and as families. Uh, Churches have been meeting online and mostly been for prayer. Also, they've been doing a lot of evangelism with their neighbors to Mm. the extent that they can get out, uh, providing, you know, food and and ministering and even offering prayer for their uh, non-believing neighbors. But one thing I think in particular that I wanted to mention, and uh, that is uh, there's a a ministry called Weave, Weave Family, that, uh, that is all about mobilizing families for God's global purposes, you know, and they start with, uh, with uh, the biblical basis of mission and then move into the state of the world and then move into uh, practical applications of living that out. And it's all geared for the family, uh, for, 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 for Christian parents, moms and dads to teach their, uh, to teach their kids a lot of age appropriate things and things like that. And so as families have been cooped up for 50 days now uh, in this large country, and now it's apparently happening in the, in the U.S. and, and globally, mm-hmm. you've got families together. What, what better time could there be uh, not only to pray as families and to study the scriptures together as families and to minister to your non-Christian neighbors together as families and just to have fun mm-hmm. and relax? Our family played a board game last night, and it was a blast. Mm. And let the record show that I beat my kids. <laughs> <laughs> I know they want to know that, but what a great opportunity if you're with your family for weeks on end, just like our brothers and sisters back in country have done, study some of these materials. For example, the Weave materials, it looks like the the website is wevefamily.org, so go check that out. W-E-A-V-E family.org. Cool. All right, so moving on, what about, and this is the thing that nobody wants to talk about because they don't want to be insensitive but they need to raise support. Maybe they were already raising support. Can you raise support in a time such as this? Should you stop? Is it it insensitive of you? Or is it the flip side? Is this a time when people are more aware of the global need for Jesus than ever before? So you should be doubling down and getting appointments and what sort of appointments and all that kind of stuff. And so I first of all wanna say that uh, there's not an easy answer in all this, but People are probably more sensitive to different things, and so there might be someone that they don't want to, they don't want to meet, they don't want to talk, they don't want to have that discussion, uh, and there are others who might be more willing to have that discussion than ever before, uh, and so again, not easy answers on all of this, uh, but I will say that if if right now, and this is just me, if I was going to be needing to to raise some, or I was in the process. If I was in the process of raising uh, support right now, I, I would probably go against our normal uh, recommendations that we ask people to do as far as doing face-to-face. And maybe actually, yeah, I would try and set up some Zoom conversations. Now, that, that's easier to say than do, right? And so uh, I'll give a practical example. Um, if there was somebody, let's say there was somebody in Portland, Oregon, and I live in Arkansas, and they have, an expre- they have expressed an interest before in in the ministry or we've just had a good conversation and and they're on my newsletter list and we have never talked or or at least i don't want to say it that way but i've never invited them to join my team or maybe they've never given before maybe they've just given a special gift once or twice this might be an opportune time to reach out to them and say hey if you're as cooped up as i am uh, you could use some 
you could use some uh, some interaction. How would you like to zoom? I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to catch up with how you and your family are doing and share about us and and also a little bit more about our, our ministry and our vision and our budget goals for how God's going to continue using our ministry to change lives, not just now during the, 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 the crisis, but God willing down the road a couple months. Let's, let's talk. Now, that's kind of a long thing to text someone. You might be able to call someone on the phone and, and set up the Zoom. I suppose you could text that to somebody. And Normally, I would say, you know, hey, don't text about money, but this might be one of those rare times where people might be more willing to, to interact and, and have a discussion. And so there might be some meetings that you could have over video that might otherwise be, be hard under quote unquote normal times. Those are just some of my thoughts. What do you think, Scott? Yeah, Aaron, I think, I think that could work. I think you're onto something there. Now, I do want to uh, make a little bit of a disclaimer that with my experience over the last couple months, uh, and of course living in Asia, I, I'm not there in the States, you know, wherever, wherever your support base might be. And, uh, and so I can't really speak to what the, what the mindset is there. So I think you've got to proceed cautiously. You've got to yeah. proceed with sensitivity and yes. spirit-directed uh, sensitivity and, and kind of go before the Lord perhaps for each person that you might want to initiate with and just ask, you know, what, what is God asking me to do in this particular case with this Good particular word. person? Uh, so I, I, I don't Good think word. that could be underscored enough. Uh, but again, I do want to also just put out there that I, I, I haven't been raising support over the last two months uh, sure. with, with donors in the States or anywhere. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so I'm just not sure what that would be like. Right. Now, what I can say is that uh, our supporters have been, again, I haven't checked MPDX for a few weeks like I just shared, but as of the last time that I checked, uh, they have continued to be incredibly faithful. Okay. And uh, it... it, it as evidenced by how they're reaching out to us and, and asking how we're doing and asking how they can pray, I believe that they are really motivated, not just because they care for us, which they do, they love our family and they, they want us to be okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they want to, as best as they can, continue partnering with us. Yeah. But I think also there's a sense, you know, there, I know there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of anxiety out sure. there in the world. And I, I struggle with that myself, you know, so I think it's a, it's a good reminder to go back to the scriptures, you mm -hmm. know, uh, go back to Psalms 46 and many other places and be reminded that God is in control. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, I think that people have a heightened spiritual sensitivity yes. at this time. And so I think uh, it's a key time for evangelism. And I think it's also uh, a time where, where supporters who are perhaps a little bit uh, geopolitically in tune and, and maybe a little bit... Uh, uh, asking some of the the questions about about what God is up to in the world, and I'll just say I don't I don't know what He's up to right now. Sure, but I think that people want to be part of that. Yeah. They they want to be they want to know that their partnership is is being effective in in seeing the knowledge of God's glory fill the earth as the waters cover the seas, and and to the extent that you can connect with that, mm -hmm. I think that uh, that would really resonate with people. Yeah, and you know I have a unique perspective as well from uh, I think it. It's widely known that I was a quote unquote failed support raiser for a number of years before I even went to a boot camp back in the day. When I began to actually apply uh, some of the principles and training that, that I needed, I started doing so um, during a crisis. It was right during the, the, the housing market crisis uh, that, that hit the US many years ago. And, and so uh, as I really started trying to raise my primary support, uh, uh, Scott, I sat down with several different people who were in the housing business. They were they were builders, they were contractors, and and I had several people go, "Hey, I love your idea and your vision for ministry." Also, I have 19 houses that are partially constructed, and I'm about ready to claim bankruptcy. Like, I can't join your team. And so, I got a lot of no's early on that really challenged me to go, "What is this really what God called me to do? This this doesn't seem to be working out so well." Um, and yet, also, I. I came across other people that said, yeah, uh, I need to invest in something like this. If there's anything that's happened with this economic downturn, it's, it's challenged me to think about where I'm actually investing and, and I want to invest in, in eternity, not just in the housing or not just in the stock market swings and things like that. And so I, it, was, it was an interesting time to be doing some primary support raising. Um, now, I did have some support and I did take a little bit of a dip in that time, uh, but, but also um, yeah, it was just it was just interesting, and so it, I guess what I would say is, God was faithful even though there was some unique difficulty to it. Now you raised or were living off support uh, back in back in uh, two thousand one, weren't you? 
during the 9-11 crisis that hit the United States. Did that, what, what was that like being somebody who was on support during kind of a, a big event, so to speak? Yeah, that's right, Aaron. Uh, my wife and I were fairly newly married at the time and we were working in, in campus ministry uh, at that time. And uh, yeah, I remember that clearly, even though that was, you know, a while ago now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, if I remember correctly, that event kind of kicked off the uh, a recession that hit in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, about that same time. And yeah, our support took a little bit of a downturn, but it didn't fall off a cliff. It just, you know, I'd say it probably dropped, I don't remember, you know, maybe 15%, 20%. And we had a little bit of a reserve back then. Uh, not a ton, but we had enough. And again, if I remember back then, uh, students on campus were... Uh, were just very open to talking about spiritual things. They were very open to uh, to hearing the gospel. Yeah, you know, and, so and the crisis can really cause people to be to be open. Both believers that are that are that are considering their investments in eternity, as well as of course the people that that don't know Jesus yet. And so, uh, again, as we as we said early on in this podcast, it's not just about the money, no doubt about it. And yet, um, we do need to consider as people who raise and live off support. Uh, some of the different uh, sociological constructs and interactions and heart things going on with people regarding their finances and regarding their 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 relationship with God and also regarding how how they're investing in the collaborative Great Commission work that we're doing. So uh, anyway, okay, good, good. Okay, so now we're we're kind of getting more towards the end of the podcast, and let's go ahead and, and, and kind of segue. Yeah, Aaron, this is, as I look back, this is now the, uh, the third crisis, third major global crisis that we've seen uh, in the 20 years or so that we've been in ministry. The first one, of course, that I just shared about being 9-11, and then, as you alluded to, also was the, uh, what do we call it, the Great Recession. The that, Great, or at least the, the housing market crisis. The, yeah, so whatever you call it, 20, 2008, 2009, or 10, or whatever, yeah. You know, and it seems like, if I remember correctly, back during those days, our support probably took about a 30% downturn, but it mm -hmm. came back, mm -hmm. you know, so these things are cyclical, yeah. you know, and I think, I think by God's grace, I think we'll see the same thing happen here, but I guess what I wanted to say with that is we're just on the, on the leading edge yeah. uh, of the coronavirus uh, now, globally at least, even though, even though my family and I feel like, you know, you know, we've been in it for two months, but we don't know what's going to happen, yeah. you know, and so that's, that, that, that there's kind of that pause there, you yeah. know, and so... So honestly, as you're asking me some of those questions, I just, I have to confess, you know, normally I have answers for everything. <laughs> you know, I like to, I pride myself in having the answers, yeah. you know, but I don't have the answers now. Yeah. You know, I mean, one thing I, I will say that, that um, has resonated with my family and me and our supporters is uh, for those supporters that you already have on your team that love you and that, that care for you and they're really invested in your mission, mm -hmm. uh, engage with them through yeah. prayer. Uh, perhaps even asking them to meet an emergency need if there is one. Yeah, uh, there probably is. Uh, I think that uh, I think that your supporters would love to hear from you because they want to know that you're safe. Yeah, and especially for those of your audience who may be serving internationally, they especially want to know that you're safe. Yeah, uh, and of course, as we engage with them, we want to know that our supporters are safe and doing well. But for those people that may be referrals in the states or wherever that you may not have a relationship with that may be in crisis themselves, I honestly, I don't know what to say. Yeah. We just trust the Lord for wisdom. And I don't know that we would give strong advice. In fact, I hope I hope uh, the listeners to this don't aren't, aren't going to go, okay, well, SRS said I had to do this and do that. Right. That is not, this right. is really more of a, a moment in time. At the time this is being recorded, Scott and I are in an unnamed Asian country on Thursday, March 19th, 2020. And yeah, we're just on the leading edge of, um, yeah, something, something that could go on for quite a while and it's probably going to change and things are going to happen that we're not even anticipating and, and we, don't even, we don't even know. We just know the one who does know. We know that, right. that God is in control. He's very much on his throne. Amen. We have thoughts. We have ideas. Um, but at the end of the day, and we say this frequently even in the, the Support Raising Solutions boot camps, the most important thing in your entire life is your spiritual health, is your relationship with Jesus Christ. That's that's more important uh, that, than uh, all the things that we're, we're sharing and talking about here, and maybe some advice and ideas. And hopefully, there's hopefully there's a little bit of wisdom in here for the listeners to to glean and and, and apply. But also, God might lead you very clearly towards something that we're not even touching on 
in this podcast. Please follow the Lord in that. Please be faithful to what God has put in front of you. That's That's right. uh, That's going to be our hearts over anything regarding the finances and how you're raising them and, and, and all that. And of course we want you to be safe. Uh, we don't, we don't want you to run the risk of, of, uh, exposing others or, or Mm -hmm. un, un, unknowingly being exposed yourself and then carrying that to someone else because you're being so bold that you're being foolish. We don't want anybody to be foolish. And, and, uh, yeah, we're, we're living in this with you. We're not the, the experts that have all the advice and, and, and all the wisdom and all the knowledge to, to tell you. So, uh, well, S- Scott, thank you for, for sitting down and doing this with me, even from about six feet away from each other. I hope the microphone has caught a lot of our conversation. Social uh, distancing, right? This has been uh, probably the most unique uh, both boot camp I've ever facilitated and the most unique podcast I've ever recorded all in the same week. So I... I partially blame you, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I did not invite you here. Put That's that on right. one of uh, we both one of my friends. Up here together. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's it's these are unique times, Aaron. I'm glad I'm glad you've been here to uh, to experience it together. And uh, you know, for me, it's it, it's it's a wild ride, uh, and and God is glorified. Amen. And He's in control. And I don't know what five minutes from now is going to hold, but He does. He does. And that's okay. That's all we need. He does. To our listeners, uh, our, our thoughts and our prayers are with you and for you as ministry leaders to be faithful to that which God has put in front of you. And I uh, definitely encourage you to seek Him first. Uh, if you're married, I would say seek your spouse second, your kids third, and, and then the ministry work that you get to do for the glory of God and, and be salt and light to this world because we have a hope that the world doesn't. And what a wonderful time to express and share and show the love of Jesus Christ. May blessings be upon you wherever you're at in the world and wherever you're serving. Amen. Thanks for joining us for this episode. We would love to hear your ideas for future content. Please visit supportraisingsolutions.org slash feedback to share your thoughts and questions. Also, wherever you download your podcast from, be sure to subscribe for future episodes and come back each week to gain more insight into the process of building and maintaining your personal support team.